Hello and welcome to another video from Double O Rail. Uh, this is uh, Loco Works Wednesday, and it's uh, part two of our uh, Class 66 uh, Railhead Treatment Train project. Uh, body side, I started to figure out how I was going to do um, the lighting. And uh, oh, before I continue, uh, this handy tray that you see, uh, you can get these at the Dollar Tree. I think I did a video before. I'll stick the link up in the, the container, but you can buy these for a dollar here in the United States, and uh, they're perfect for uh, putting trains into and keeping all the, the locomotive parts together. Um, so as I was saying, uh, I took this apart to see what I was going to do um, electronics wise. Uh, one thing I'll show you is I, I did take the, uh, the NEM couplings out. Uh, it was quite easy. They just pulled out. Uh, nothing strange there. And here is the, the piping work uh, that was on the front. Um, so there's two screws that hold uh, the board in and the board is basically uh, just a DCC uh, ready plug. Uh, what I'm thinking is I think I can uh, replace the DCC ready plug um, with just some standard connectors that just fit in there and do all the custom wiring off of that or maybe even just use the DCC plug to do the custom wiring. Um, if I can do that, then I don't have to cut any wires. Um, I can plug the thing in to get the wiring, unplug it, and, and so on. So and it also leaves the thing open for some kind of cool projects in the future. So uh, I think that's what I'm going to do with that. Um, just so you know, I'm not going to do the electronics this week. I've got too much stuff to do to the body shelf, um, but we will be doing the electronics next week. Um, let's see. So yeah, so I'm going to start off um, by telling you guys what we're going to do in today's video. In today's video, there's a couple of important things we need to do. Uh, one, if you look here, um, you will see that the lighting array that I cut out last week um, goes through um, this base here. So we're going to have to cut out a couple of pieces of this. Uh, so I'm going to mark, show you how to mark those off. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is show you how to tell which way the loco is orientated. Um, I believe uh, this grill here that I need to kick cut out has to go over the motor and the reason for that is uh, this box right here if you look at the uh, pictures of the loco this box is always above uh, the silencer uh, exhaust thing and so um, that's going to have to um, be done that way so we'll show you that in a few minutes uh, so basically the first thing I'm going to do is uh, remove show you how to remove this and remove the lamp iron and then I'm going to file down these pieces and then I'll show you how to mark the thing off on the on the chassis. Um, then what we're going to do is um, we're going to go and show you the uh, parts we did for the silencer. And then I'm going to cut this grill out. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do uh, some panel line marking for this, uh, just to kind of you know, kind of make those details stand out. And it's a little tricky because this is obviously. Um, embossed, rather than um, you know, sunk in, so the panel lining has to be done a little differently. Um, I'll probably paint this if I have time, and I'm excited. We'll file this down, and we have some 3D printed parts that we did, and um, that we'll add on to this as well. And we'll also show you how we came up with the 3D printed parts. All right, so uh, first off, we're going to go and um, show you guys how to uh, mark this off. Okay, so tools and supplies we're going to be using today. Uh, today, we're using the same hand drill uh, that I used last week. And I'd like to uh, sh have a quick shout out to the folks that did uh, leave comments in the last video telling me what I did wrong uh, with the other um, hand drill. That's very helpful. I, I will now know how to use that in future. Uh, I'm, but I'm still using this one today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, flathead screwdriver. This is mainly a small flathead screwdriver just to pry out the um, railing there in the front of the loco. Um, if I have time, we'll be using a dark gray Tamiya panel line accent color. Um, I saw this being used on someone else's YouTube channel and it's uh, fantastic stuff. 
and uh, I can't quite remember uh, the name of their channel off the top of my head, but I will put a link to their video in the description since I think you should uh, give props to uh, good ideas when you see it. Uh, we're also going to be using uh, some Tamiya 6mm masking tape. Uh, this is the refill, uh, but basically comes on a roll like this. It's very handy. Uh, there's also cheaper versions. Uh, this is a, a Chinese product. It comes in various different sizes. It kind of looks to me like someone took a blade or something and a rotary tool to a uh, roll of uh, tape. But uh, either way, it's very handy uh, to mask off fine parts and modeling. Um, I'm also going to be using these uh, fine artist brushes, probably just the smaller ones, uh, to do some of the uh, paintwork. Um, for priming the 3D printed parts, as I break the hands thing here, uh, for the 3D printed parts, uh, we're going to be using this uh, acrylic polyurethane uh, surface primer. It's uh, gray. You don't have to necessarily use gray, but I like to use gray because it uh, makes things uh, stand out a little bit as being primed as well as being um, 3D printed. It just makes it easier to notice which parts are, are have been 3D printed or not. Um, this is 200 milliliters, and this is fantastic stuff. It's, I think, designed for an airbrush, but you can brush it on, and uh, it, it's kind of uh, watered down a little bit, so it makes it easier to um, to apply. Um, I'm also going to be using uh, flat steel. Uh, you can use aluminum or whatever. That's mainly just for the, the top part there. Um, I'm also going to be using uh, dark gray, which will be for the parts that I don't panel line um, with that. All right, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to go and show you guys um, how to do that. Oh, before I forget, um, if you look in the description, uh, there's a link to the uh, O Rail uh, UK and uh, US uh, Amazon store. Uh, it's not a big deal if you order stuff off of there, but um, I've put the links in the store so that it's easier under, I think, Class 66 project, um, just so you can find the stuff. And, uh, you know, if you want to order it off there, that's great. I get a couple of dollars. Um, if you don't, that's fine. I'll just give you guys an idea. Some people have asked in the past um, where we get products and how to find them and so on. So rather than me telling you to search for stuff, uh, all the links are, are handily there. And that's okay. So uh, first off, we're going to show you how to remove uh, this. Now, if you if I move this other way, I'll find the other one. Um, basically, if you if I can pull it out here, uh, you can see that the um, the other one, it's really flimsy, so you got to be careful with it. Um, but if I put it there, you can see there's little pegs. And basically, um, you just have to very, very gently pry those pegs loose. They don't appear to be glued in. Uh, so a little bit of force um, or a little bit of leverage will, will do it. So um, you can use a, a pen knife blade if you want. Um, or you can uh, use this. Um, the pen knife blade may be better. Um, but... We'll use the screwdriver for today. Um, I found that once you got it out to the middle here, Don, um, it's easier to um, just catch it underneath like this and then just twist like so. That's so basically what you want to do is you just want to put it under there and gently just pry it out. Um, so what you see there, what I'm doing is I'm taking the thing getting it in between and just gently twisting it like so uh, usually the last one is the hardest one to get out uh, you just have to be real careful not to break it I found that if you just edge closer to it it sh should it should pop out All right, so uh, I got smart, and I got one of these uh, really long and pointy uh, cocktail sticks, and uh, that actually was able to go in a hole and just pop right out. So uh, there's a little tip for you, and the thing came out. All right, um, I'm actually going to use the same thing for the lamp iron now. Um, so the lamp iron is uh, right here. Uh, be very careful because um, it will come out pretty easily. And so you just take this and then pop it like so. And lo and behold, the lamp iron has come out. So we're going to set that aside and uh, move on to the next task. So the next task, <clears throat> like I said earlier, 
is going to be to drill the pilot holes in the um, in the body shell here. So what we got to do first is um, I actually took the motor out earlier, so that's why it's a little um, loose. Um, but what we're going to do is line up this grill part with the motor block end. Um, you shouldn't have this problem with the wiring because by this point you probably didn't take it apart. Um, I have, so I'm going to try to um, stick that back like so for now. And so all you do is so make sure you're not clamping any wires. Um, line it back up. What you can see here is that there's an overlap between the two, and so we're going to need to uh, basically just push the drill in a little bit so that we know where those um, marks are. Uh, now I'm going to do this without the motor attached, so you'll see me holding on to the back end a little bit. And so um, I've got the drill that we used last week, and I'm just going to go and put it in there and do maybe like two or three twists. Should be good enough. And likewise, do two or three twists in this way. That should hopefully have marked it off. Uh, it's important to make sure you're holding it in position um, so that it doesn't mark in the wrong place. Uh, likewise, we're going to do uh, this one here. I'm going to have to use a smaller drill bit. Um, I'm actually going to try to mark it with just this here. It may or may not work. I don't think, I think it's going to be too big. All right, so you're going to have to uh, mark that off with a smaller drill bit in a minute. But I'm going to undo this, and hopefully it has worked. Again. I have no fingernails, so this is trickier than normal. I've also got the motor off on that end, so it's being a little uncooperative. Okay, so you can see there, um, with the screwdriver out, you can see there, it's uh, marked it there. And if I flick it around the other end, while holding the motor in place, it's a lot easier, by the way, to pop the motor back in. I just don't want to do it, since it was a real pain to get it out. Um, you can see here, it's marked it here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out about one to two millimeters on either side of this all the way through, just like a, uh, it's kind of a, a square piece out of here. And what that will allow me to do is that will allow me to mount the LEDs in from behind next week. And obviously we'll give away for those to shine out. Now, if you didn't want to cut into the chassis, you could technically probably drill through this uh, all the way. And then there would still be a hole for the LEDs to, sh to shine out. And that might be a better way to do it. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, I think I'm going to go with, with cutting it out because it'll expose more of the LED uh, light out, uh, which is what we're going for. And the plastic is fairly strong, so I think it will hold up uh, to me cutting it. Okay, so um, if you look here, uh, there's the one that we marked uh, earlier. I'll forget real close to the camera. There we go. Um, so there's some holes already in it from the you know, manufacturer, but uh, basically uh, right here is the uh, hole that we just put in it, and right here is the hole that we put it um, over here. Now, you probably notice right away the biggest problem that we have is that this is actually on the corner, um, so we're going to have to do something clever there uh, to make sure that we don't weaken uh, the structure, uh, so we'll have to figure that out. Um, but yeah, it should be relatively easy. Um, so what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm not going to waste everybody's time and show you guys cut me cutting out 10 different holes. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do it on one end. And then uh, you just basically repeat um, for the others. Also, it's going to be a lot trickier to do this on camera. Uh, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is grab my orange Sharpie here and just uh, mark off where I'm planning to cut. And on the other side as well. Uh, 
Now, if you have a silver or a white Sharpie, that would obviously work a lot better. Or even some Tipex would probably work. Um, but for now, this will this will work. All right. And so what I'm going to do first is you could use something crazy like use a Dremel tool um, with a rotary blade. But I'm going to try to use a standard uh, X-Acto knife. Usually works pretty well for cutting through things. And I'm going to move the motor bogey out of the way just a little bit. Uh, so that I don't have any accidents and then basically what I'm going to do is where I've got this uh, marked out I'm going to come in a little bit like I said I only want this to be about two millimeters or so wide and uh, so yeah I'm, I'm actually cutting into this um, and so I'm applying some pressure on either side here to uh, you want to make sure you don't go down too far I just want to make sure you don't go down too far um, that would be bad. Um, you gotta go down far enough that you go past the light. Um, so it's gonna require some pressure, and you wanna make sure you're cutting it straight, which is tricky to do on camera. And the Dremel tool it's looking like a good idea now, huh? Uh, I don't want to use the Dremel tool because I think uh, the Dremel tool will put too much pressure on us and snap it, so. Okay. So this is going to be take a little while. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, uh, you get the idea at least so I'm gonna keep going with this and show you the end product All right, so we're getting there. Uh, so one thing I wanted to show you is uh, once you get down uh, To by the way, it's a lot easier to do this off camera because um, you can basically hold it like this and then um, Just apply pressure like so it's a lot easier. Anyway, you can see what I've done And uh, by the way when you're cutting this when you get into this yellow buffer beam part uh, you've got to go down like about fraction of a millimeter below uh, the yellow buffer beam uh, or into the yellow buffer beam so you just gotta basically take your index finger and make sure it's not the sharp part of the exacto knife and just press down on it uh, while you're holding it like this and cut into it and it should be fine so uh, what you can see here hopefully if I, uh, move the motor bogey out of the way and hopefully the camera focuses on this water in my hand um, so what you've done here is you can see it's cut down there's the hole right there and we've cut down below it um, so we've cut just down below it on both sides here and so what we're gonna do next is basically just angle it in slightly and then just uh, wiggle it back and forth with a pair of pliers and hopefully it'll, uh, it'll come right off now the important thing with this is make sure you angle it in uh, just kind of taper it in towards the center and uh, pop it off. You don't necessarily have to cut the whole thing across. Um, you can you can angle it down, and that'll actually um, you know cut away less of the buffer beam. Uh, the other thing um, that you might be concerned about is when you cut these holes out, um, you know it's going to weaken the structure of this. So when I put the um, the LEDs in place, I'll probably um, put uh, some kind of uh, 3D printed or piece of uh, uh, plastic strip in behind this and so there's some good news uh the good news is uh once i started cutting it in at an angle it actually uh, was quite brittle and so it it popped right off um so you can see there uh what we're aiming for is there's the the drilled hole and now we have the gap that we're aiming for there for the leds it's not it's a big enough gap for the led to uh to work but it's also not a huge gap. I think on the other side, I'll even do a smaller gap since I don't think one that big is even that necessary. All right, so let me get working on this end and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I just, just wanted to show this to you guys before I uh, snapped it here. Yeah, you can see I've gotten down into the uh, part of the yellow buffer here. It's just a little bit over. So I'm gonna start uh, cutting it across now just tampered over a little bit so I'm just gonna take the knife and uh, work my way this way um, just a couple of tips 
uh, take your time. Um, you know, these things are sh exacto knives are sharp implements. Uh, you can very easily stab yourself, and if you do that, you're gonna end up probably needing stitches or something like that. It's just gonna be a bad day for you. Um, if you want, you can always wear gloves. Um, you know, latex gloves or something like that while you're working on it. So if you slip and cut something, it's probably still gonna go through the latex glove, but you know, it might protect your hand a little bit. Um, and obviously, if you're a little kid, make sure you get um, you know an adult to to do that for you. Uh, don't try to do it yourself. Um, and obviously, if you're a minor, make sure you get your parents' permission before you start cutting up your expensive logos. Um, but yeah, so what I'm going to do is basically uh, cut this inwards like this and pop it off. So give me a couple more minutes and we'll we'll get it working. This is taking me probably about three or four minutes to do this one, about three or four minutes to do that one. Just take your time. It's no rush. Uh, it's better to do it right than to snap it or something like that. Do not apply too much pressure. You need to provide, provide a, you know, put a little firm pressure on it, but not anything crazy. And obviously, you got to hold the side still um, rigid so that you can cut it because uh, this will flex around a little bit. And that way, you won't crack the chassis if you're providing uh, enough pressure on the side. It's the only reason why I'm cutting it off camera. Um, just keep in mind that when you are holding it right there and cutting it, uh, you, you do run the risk of stabbing yourself in the hand. And there you have it. It's uh, you saw what I did there was basically work it off on both sides, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. When you get down towards the end part, and it pops right back out. All right, so there you have it. The uh, chassis has uh, those two holes on it, and uh, good enough space for light. Like I said a few minutes ago, uh, you don't need to make it this big. Um, I did that because it was my first time trying this. Um, so my suggestion would be make that a little bit smaller. Um, but it's good enough for mounting the lights there, so I'm not too worried about it. It does not really weaken the middle part either, so it should be fine. All right, so uh, next up, I'm going to go and uh, drill some holes in here. And I'll show you me drilling the holes, and then basically uh, what I'm going to do is drill enough holes uh, to be able to get the exacto knife in there. And then we're going to run uh, the exacto knife up and down it. I may use the Dremel tool. I'm not sure yet. I think the Dremel tool is going to be too insane, and not, I'm not going to be in control of it. So, and it's going to go anywhere. So I think uh, drilling a couple of holes here and popping the exacto knife in it to to make a start, and then working my way down through here will probably be the best bet. Um, actually, come think of it, I think I might do this last. Okay, just a couple of things. Um, as I said, I took some parts out. Uh, this here is the NEM coupling. It just pulls out of the uh, NEM pocket underneath. Uh, so there's two of those you take out. Uh, this is a kind of valence thing that's uh, stuck under the the thing like so. It just pulls right out. Uh, they were starting to fall out, so I took those off. And then finally, um, there's a, a set of holes. If I hold it up here, uh, you can see there, there's two holes there. And... Uh, two holes on the other side. And this is basically for the cab. Um, the cab has these little prongs, it goes in there. And so all you do is uh, pull this out a little bit and pry the cab up a little bit so it's just resting outside the other holes. And then you pull the other side and it pops right out. It's relatively easy. Um, these cabs are actually uh, too wide and they're gonna cause problems for lights too. Uh, so we're gonna cut these off um, here and probably cut the cab down the center and, and squeeze it together. I also need to look at some photos. It may not, the cab might not be right. You might slide a 3D print something uh, while we're at it. All right, so we're gonna move on to the uh, fun part, which is the roof. And so um, I wanted to show you guys uh, what we did. So this is the uh, silencer exhaust thingy that goes on the top, I think it's a silencer. Um, but basically it's like the, the muffler or exhaust on your uh, on your car um, basically the this is a couple of things wrong with this one um, first of all if you look at photos it, it's a lot higher up um, it doesn't sit flush um, in the loco like that you can see Warmby have made it flush with some pins um, so it, it doesn't sit flush it, it's also not quite the right shape um, it doesn't look like it actually sticks up like this it, it actually comes straight out it does raise a little bit, but not as 
not as dramatically as that. You can see there it's angled up and above. So it's almost like they were trying to put this in the right position and then they had you know, made this part the wrong size or something like that and, and try to work it out. So we're not going to use this. Uh, you could um, raise it up if you want to know. Uh, you need to raise it up um, 1.25 millimeters uh, to put it in the right position. Uh, so if you're going this route, um, you just get some plastic card, uh, either you know a couple of layers and just uh, two strips across here and across here, and then paint them black or something like that. Uh, should raise it up good enough. You don't want to 3D print it. However, since we have the 3D printer, I thought I would go that route. Now I know last week I said I wasn't going to try to 3D print stuff, um, but then. When I looked at the more photos of the Loco and did a little bit more research, I realized um, that it, it's probably better to 3D print some stuff because of the things that are wrong or just not quite right. And obviously it's a, a railroad model. And so, you know, it, it's not, not that bad uh, for a railroad model, but we're gonna try to improve it. So there's a couple of things. Uh, one, this um, silencer thing needs to be raised. And it's also not the quite right shape that's here. Uh, there's also, you can see there's some rivets here. If I uh, move it a little closer to the camera. Um, right here you can see uh, there's some rivets. These actually go down to about here. And it's more of a mount point uh, for the end of the exhaust system. Um, so I'm going to 3D print um, the adapter that this thing goes into. And paint it the aluminum silver color that it's supposed to be. And I haven't had a chance to 3D print this piece up. It's actually sitting in a 3D printer. Uh, right now as I'm filming this so um, I will show you that next week with the um, with the LED parts um, there's also a vent right about here um, similar to this one a little bit smaller um, and I'm going to try to 3d print that up as well so again that's something for next week um, this ridge there's a set of doors or kind of here and so from about in line with the edge of this all the way back to the exhaust. This is actually raised up, um, and then this section it kind of ducks down and it raises back up along this vent. So um, what I've done is I've 3D printed a strip that is exactly 0.75 millimeters um, high, and it's gonna get glued into place right there. So. Um, since I'm going to have to paint the roof anyway because of some of the detailing, um, at least touch it up a bit, I'm going to go and glue this onto the loco just so you can see where all the 3D printed parts are. And then um, I'll, I've will i got some EWS yellow and EWS red paint on order and uh, it'll be in for, for next week, uh, hopefully. And um, I'll go ahead and and show you guys um, how to do that either in the next video or one of the subsequent videos. Um, so that's that's that part. So I wanted to show you uh, the iterations of go what we went through to uh, get the silencer right. So um, the first thing I wanted to do was try to get the, the size and shape right. So what I did was I started off with a cylinder and blender um, and I basically um, started off with a, a full size cylinder and then I squished it down uh, by changing the x-axis value. Uh, so the y-axis value is the is the same uh, for the radius to, to fit across here. And then I basically just squished the um, the x-axis so that it gives us compressed look. And this is basically just a, a 3D printed cylinder. Um, it took about nine eight or nine minutes to print out. And I was just trying to get the shape right. Um, if you look at the photos, this looks like it's a um, a, a shape like this, that, that like your exhaust uh, that sits on top. Um, the only thing with it is that this doesn't sit quite right. If you look here at, um, at this uh, gap right here, um, the shape of it isn't right, right? So when it's sitting in there, it kind of, if you look at photos, it drops down more, um, almost like it's, it's going straight rather than uh, being curved. So it's almost like it's curved straight and then curved uh, rather than just a, a straight cylinder. Now, that might be an optical effect. It might be that this is actually sitting down inside the uh, roof of the Loku, and so it's just more of a um, more of a diameter, and it's just sitting down. Uh, but obviously, we can't get that effect with this piece in here. So that was the first one. I didn't quite get the size right. Um, so the next iteration, I basically uh, adjusted the coordinates a little bit, 
and I duplicated the whole cylinder and increased the radius slightly, I think like by a fraction of a millimeter, and then positioned it about halfway. And so if you look at these uh, in photos, there's like a kind of a band here and a band on either end um, where it's kind of got um, either an indentation or a raise, depending on which photos you're looking at, um, as part of just the, the way it's been manufactured. So I wanted to get that effect in there. Um, so with a 3D printer, I didn't have to do supports or anything. I was able to uh, just make it high enough that uh, the 3D printer got that effect in there. Um, and so this is the right height. Um, you can see there, it's sort of um, raised up on that side. And you look this way, it's raised up above the body this way. Now, the way I did it was I kind of tilted the, the body shell at different angles um, so that it uh, mimicked the photo that I was looking at. Um, but you can see here, it still has this effect where it wasn't quite uh, right. So I'll cast those two aside. And so what I did next was I um, basically took the cylinder and I cut it just in half and I added a about one millimeter um, rectangle to the bottom of it. So I basically took this, um, I don't have the shape right, sliced it in half down the center uh, in Blender and um, yeah, when I say sliced it in half, I didn't cut this right. I cut it on the computer uh, in the three new model, and then basically added that um, that that cube uh, that's being elongated into a rectangle shape. Um, and so you can see there, uh, I also indented the edge to give that sort of uh, recessed look that you see on the silencer. Uh, if you can see that um, on there as well, so. I did that, you can still see this one had the band in it as well. And um, that worked out pretty well. It uh, it sat a little low though, uh, you can see there, it didn't quite give me the height. It did fix the look on this side though, uh, which is what we were going for. Uh, but if you look at this angle, it wasn't quite high enough. <coughs> <coughs> so um, what I did next, was you can see here I increased the um, I increased the size of the base and while I was doing this I thought I'd, I'd go ahead and add some of the detailing so I did add um, the uh, cylinder that's kind of recessed uh, for the exhaust port um, in the top and then and that's just a cylinder that's been just shoved uh, it's, it's at the thing recessed so I basically took a cylinder took a reduced radius cut about a millimeter out of it or um, maybe half a millimeter out of it and then I um, recessed it into the object that I was working on and I also added uh, these cubes um, that are rectangles on the side and uh, to give that effect um, for those um, kind of uh, connection points uh, where the thing is bolted to the to the roof so um, this was the the next attempt and you can see I increased the height and um, I added these. And the reason I added these detailing parts while I was doing the print was just to cut down on a number of iterations um, that I had to do with the print. Uh, so this actually worked really well. So, and now with the exhaust port, uh, you know that it goes in this corner right here. And I got the height, you know, oops, sorry. I got the uh, height right, I looked at some photos and it was just a little bit raised above uh, the roof, which is what we were going for. And then if I tilt it this way, I'm sorry, uh, you can see that it, it looked right. Now the only problem I had with this was when I added the detailing on the side, if you can see uh, there, but basically these were now about a fraction of a millimeter off uh, so that it wouldn't quite, it would go in, but um, even with sanding it down, it wouldn't quite uh, stay in the roof flush. Uh, so it was a little bit too wide with that extra detailing part. And so um, what I did was I basically um, reduced the size of, oops, I reduced the size of the uh, pieces on the side there. Uh, it's a bit hard to see, but you can see that this one has just about a fraction of a millimeter. Um, so it might be more evident that way. 
but it's just a fraction of a milliliter um, smaller. And then, of course, um, that obviously uh, now fits in there pretty okay. So that was the first part. Uh, I got that looking right. I looked at the photos. Um, I got the shape right this way. I got the shape and the distance from the roof to the top part right. And then looking at some photos, I got also the distance. I basically looked at this point here and this point here on either side as well as the top part. And then the um, the sides, trying to get that right. And so that worked out pretty well. So the next part was to do um, the exhaust port. And the exhaust port was pretty easy. Again, it was uh, a cylinder like so. Uh, this is a cone shape. So basically it's a cone with a slightly larger radius at the back and a smaller radius at the front, but not a pointy radius. So like, I think it was like um, seven millimeters and six millimeters. And then um, that gave me the shape. And uh, obviously I was trying to get it so that it gave me that same look, but obviously the same problem we had with the main part um, being completely uh, cylindrical like that, just raised it up so the side didn't look right. Um, so I chopped it off like I did with the other one. Uh, so again, it's the same shape. Um, just basically, um, it's just been chopped off. It's kind of hard to see, but basically it's been cut down the center. And um, ultimately, I did some adjustments. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's also got little tiny uh, bolts on there to match the, um, it's hard to see on the that way you can yeah you can sort of see the bolts right there uh, so I did the bolt pattern and then finally use the same technique uh, to do the last part now the reason I did it in three pieces uh, it will come evident hopefully in a second is um, when you put it all together the right way around like so um, it actually creates I'll move it a little closer to the camera so There are different heights and there's different things in the thing to hold together, but basically um, it creates the rivet lines. And if you look at the way the thing is built, uh, it's actually assembled this way. So you have this part and then this is bolted onto this uh, right here. And then this is bolted on here. Now I could have made this part part of this. So I might still do that, but um, basically this is what you want to go with. And this will go allow me to use a panel liner uh, later to kind of, kind of make those parts stand out a little bit more. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna primer this and then we'll we'll paint it. And then what we'll do is we'll show you guys um, how to install it in here. I'm gonna show you how to do the panel liner here. So I'm gonna apply um, some of the tape uh, around this so that it doesn't uh, cause the panel liner to drip all over the loco. And hopefully that'll work out pretty well. And then we'll wrap it up by uh, drilling a hole in this and cutting it out. And then, um, Hopefully by the time I've got all that done, this will have dried enough that I can apply the silver paint and glue it in place. So the next thing I'm gonna do is apply the surface primer uh, to the 3D printed parts. Uh, that will include the um, strip that we have here, and then I can uh, apply it up. Now what I've done is I've taken this uh, brush here, it'll work pretty well for applying it, um, but I've also got a small amount of rubbing alcohol, it's 50% rubbing alcohol, and uh, I've just dipped the, um, the brush in there. And that's just basically to uh, get the brush clean of any chemicals that were at the factory since they are a uh, cheap uh, Chinese brand. But it's also to uh, clean the brush. These are a little bit nicer brushes than the ones I throw away. And so we want to make sure that we keep those um, all good. So what we're gonna do is basically uh, shake this up and apply paint to this. Um, I'll show you a little bit of me doing it, but you guys obviously know how to paint, so you guys don't need to watch the whole thing. Uh, plus my kids are home from school, so they're now making a fair amount of noise upstairs, which may or may not uh, come on the camera. Uh, so you just want a very small amount on there, and then just start uh, applying it to 3D printed part. Now, with 3D printed parts, you want to go the opposite direction uh, to the um, to the print lines. Uh, so this was printed flat, uh, and I'll make the STL files available. Um, either through double ORL when the project's finished or um, up on um, trackside 3D. Uh, we'll see if uh, folks are interested in it or not. Um, but basically you just um, apply this like so 
and uh, a couple of layers and uh, dabbing it also does pretty well at um, getting rid of the filling in the, the gaps basically the primer paint what it's going to do is it's going to fill in um, fill in those print lines a little bit for you and uh, give you a kind of a more uh, finished surface um, you could sand this um, I printed this out with a JG Aurora um, Z603S uh, so it's a kind of a precision printer um, it's a little older so it does um, does about the same job now as the A1s and A5s do um, but it um, it does have still have the print lines a little bit um, so what I'm going to do is uh, just apply that like so you can sort of see there uh, the print lines you can see in some places uh, where it's covered up usually the second coat will will get rid of the print lines completely So a couple of people on Facebook the other day asked me how to paint or how I painted the uh, fine 3D printed parts, especially the ones that are, are small and fiddly. Um, so with this part here, what I've done is I'm using a cocktail stick just to hold it in place. And then I'm uh, applying the paint here. I don't really care about getting paint on my uh, workspace here. That's what it's for. It's a cutting mat. You just try to get it as close as you possibly can. And then what I'll do is I'll um, hold the other side and then just dab the paintbrush on. And like I said, with the paintbrush, you want to kind of dab it this way. It helps apply the paint kind of evenly and gets rid of the um, the, the print lines a little bit. So likewise, I will show you how I do it on this one. So um, here you can see I'm just holding it in place with the uh, with the cocktail stick. Try not to get it on the loco. And so on. And you just uh, work your way around until you have all the paint applied. Now with this, I'm not going to apply paint um, to the bottom of it because it's just going to be um, glued on. Um, obviously, you can see here why we're doing this before we um, glue it onto the logo as well. All right, so I'm going to let this dry, like I said, and we'll move on um, to uh, doing the panel lining. All right, so um, down here, I've got my pieces uh, drawing paint wise and then over here we've got um, the paintbrush uh, cleaning up in that solution uh, so what I'm going to do next is uh, do the panel lining uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a piece of tape along the bottom here uh, to stop the panel liner and I'll run it along, up a, bleh, I'll run it along here and up the side so what I'm doing is I'll run the just a little bit below the indentation here so we'll run it along this edge and then we'll also run it along the sides. So that way, when I drop the panel liner in, it's going to run. Um, but it'll run down the edges here. And I'll repeat the same thing um, laterally. So we'll, when it dries a little bit, we'll run it this way. Um, and then we'll run it um, the other way. And what that will do is allow us to use the panel liner to go around um, these embossed parts. Usually, um, it goes through um, kind of, a, you know, sort of um, recessed uh, pieces. Uh, but because this is not recessed, it's sticking out, but we want to do the same thing. We can still use a panel liner. We just have to use um, some tape with it. So what I'm going to use today is a six millimeter tape uh, from Tamiya. And again, this is a tape that you can find on our website or uh, Amazon store if you want. Um, or you can get wherever. Um, so you just want a length of it like so. And it's really good masking tape. Um, so... We're just going to line it up like that. And then we're going to take two smaller pieces. Like I said, this is just to stop the uh, panel liner flow. We don't want it um, leaking out all over the logo. All right, so next up, we're going to take the uh, panel line colors as uh, accent dark gray. Um, you could use black if you want. Um, now one thing that's important is to actually, um, this has a really micro fine um, uh, tip and you're gonna brush off most of the excess. But before you do that, uh, you're gonna want to um, stir it up a little bit. So I'm taking the cocktail stick I had earlier, just get it into um, all the corners there. I'm not sure if you guys can, yeah. Just get it into all the corners of the bottle um, so that it is well and truly mixed up. And this stuff smells really, really, really strong. So um, it's also 
kind of look very, very thin. So uh, you just need to be careful that you can see there how thin it actually is. All right, so I'm setting that aside. I'm going to dip this now into the mix. And so what I want to do is I want to get um, the bits here that are on top. And so never actually done this before, so seen it done lots of times. Um, so I'm going to go and you can see here, I'll move the bottle a little closer. And you can see what I'm doing. So basically I'm wiping off as much of the excess as I can. And then you just tilt it like this and drop it in. And you can see there, it's doing its magic. Uh, you can also see why. There you go. I um, chose to tape it up, hopefully. I uh, don't want to do too much. You can see there, it does it really well. So this is one of those situations where less is more. Um, I don't know if you can see on the camera what that's done. Um, if I get a little closer, maybe you can. Uh, but you can see there, and uh, that's the untreated side, and that's the treated side, and you can see, it just makes it stand out. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to let that dry, and then I'm gonna do it the opposite way. So I'm gonna put this tape on the other end, and do the top parts, and it'll run down the other side, and likewise, I will do the same thing um, here. I'm also gonna drop the panel liner in this as well, um, just because it's uh, recessed. Um, there's also a few other places you could do it. Um, there's this um, point here, and across here, and across here. And what it does is, and, and perhaps the, um, the vent up here as well. And in fact, the vent up there is actually probably a good place to do it as well. Um, but like I showed you, just there, you just very small amount, wipe it off, drop, and off it goes. And you can see there, it makes a, a real difference. Um, now, you can see I went with the dark gray, and I think that's sufficient for what I wanted to do. I looked at the photos of this uh, loco, and um, those panels um, seem to stand out more than they do on the Hornby model. Um, you can see there um, what kind of difference it actually makes. And uh, it looks like now they're, they're real panels as opposed to um, just being molded on. So, all right, so I'm gonna let this dry and then uh, we'll show you the, the magic with the rest of it. All right, so while the panel liner is drying and, and all that, um, I decided to tape up um, the part around here. Um, I can drop it into the lines here on the grill, uh, but I can also do the outside of it as well. So you can see there, it's just been taped up at a really fine margin. And the idea with this is that um, I'll be able to apply the panel liner in a very, very small amount, and it'll hopefully um, just make that stand out. Um, so if I take the panel liner and just drop it in there, and likewise drop it in there, it'll hopefully, um, you may make a bit of a mess. You can sort of see how it's uh, going in under the tape a little bit like so and we will clean that excess off uh, also just keep in mind we're going to um, weather this anyway and likewise we'll just drop like so so hopefully that will make that stand out and um, we'll show you the end result uh, here when it dries. All right, so I'm gonna let all this stuff dry for a bit, and uh, obviously this video might be a little later than I had planned, but uh, it'll still be Wednesday. All right. All right, so I've given the um, 3D printed parts here and their second coat of primer. You can see um, it's still wet, and so we're letting that dry. Um, I also had a chance to go over um, the body shell with the um, uh, panel liner and so I used the uh, dark gray panel liner pretty much everywhere. I used it um, here um, I used it um, on this detailing part here uh, Around the doors uh, you can see it's really made those handles uh, stick out I thought about having to 3d print uh, Replacement handles, but you can see there that the panel liner really has um, 
fix that problem for me. And I've also did around the door handles and around the door. Um, you can see on the top here um, that it's worked out really, really, really well for those panels on the top. Um, I've also did it around the doors here, and you can sort of see, um, and around the grills. Now, I was going to paint the grills. Um, you can see I did it uh, around the door here as well as this dealing part, but you can see the grill. Um, I was going to paint these um, with the, the light gray paint or the gray paint, um, but after doing the panel liner through it, and this one I did a mix of the um, Tamiya uh, light gray. So I did the light gray first, and then I let it dry, and then I went over it uh, with the dark gray. I have been using uh, the dark gray on the rest of it. So here, this is the uh, light gray on first. Um, and it's a little lighter in reality than it is on the camera there. Um, but you can see it has a kind of effect um, where it's subtly gray, but not really uh, totally gray. So I think that worked really well. And um, I panel lined uh, the edge lines here, these panels. Um, and likewise, I did this as well. Uh, you can see where it's been panel lined. Uh, down through here as well. It really works well. Uh, the contrast with the yellow in the EWS livery and also did the detailing here as well. And you can see on the roof it's worked out pretty well. So I'm quite happy with how that uh, turned out. So the next thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to go and show you guys how to drill this out um, while we let that um, dry. Um, now one thing I did do, just so you guys know, um, I did prop the oops, I did prop the body shell up um, with one of these um, Airfix Umbral um, paint cans, and um, it just made it easier for the panel line to run a little bit. Um, but you can see here, um, did it down through here. It's just subtle, um, but it's enough to make the detailing on the molded shell um, sort of show up. So I think that's a really, really, really good option. So hopefully you guys. Uh, we'll pick up on that. Now I did think about just doing it here instead of cutting it out, um, but that see-through look is what I'm really going for um, by 3D printing this. And it's a bit of a risk since I'm not quite sure if I can 3D print the grill with the FDM. I may have to end up using uh, the resin printer. We will see. So anyway, for the rest of today, I'm going to uh, let this dry, and then when this is ready, we'll paint it up uh, in the aluminum color and uh, drop it in here. I'm going to show you next how to cut this out. Okay, so you can see here um, I've started the process. And so uh, I just wanted to give you guys, and make sure that it worked first, but basically uh, show you guys what's involved. So I'm not quite sure yet if I'm going to drill lots of holes uh, down through here. If you look, there's um, these rivet marks, um, which is where basically I've been uh, drilling it out. So what, what I did was uh, starting in the corner here, this is the uh, one millimeter drill bit. Um, it might be a little tricky to do this this way, but basically take it like that and start drilling down and just keep turning. Won't take much, don't apply too much pressure. Uh, basically just like drilling out the other bits we did last week. Um, and don't worry if this looks bad, um, it won't look great until it's all removed and then you'll need to either sand it down or use uh, one of those um, brush pens that I showed you last week um, to um, cut it down and so on. So you can see there um, you've made a nice hole. Uh, you want to keep it inside the grid. It's better to uh, have it inside the grid than to mess up the, the body uh, too much. And so um, just what you do is go about uh, maybe one over, two over, so leave a space and then um, just drill out the next one. You can probably drill it at an angle kind of with the um, the detailing piece. And you just want to drill it like this. Now, like I said, you could use a Dremel tool, but my concern is if I cut this with the Dremel and I lose control of it, it's going to ruin the body shell. So it's better just take your time and pick your battles and just do it this way. So, all right, so you can see there, I've now got uh, two 
uh, drill holes, uh, like so. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the X-Acto knife, put it into the first drill hole, and or maybe I'll put it in the second one, depending on what handedness you are. And basically what you want to do is just wiggle it back and forth until you break through the hole like so. Just gonna be careful you don't slip it. And usually it may take a little bit of ah, force to get out. And we can see there uh, you've now sort of put a hole in it. So hopefully it's big enough for the blade. And then what you do is just work your way down. Now this might be good enough to start the Dremel and get the Dremel tool down through here. I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of uh, weary about doing that. Uh, what I might do is I might just keep scoring it um, down this line here. Is is you know there's kind of a, a channel there that you can put the knife into. Uh, so I might just keep scoring it like this um, and just slowly go through it until it's done. So I'm gonna do this process along the back here and then also down through the side. And then this whole thing, um, as you can see there, it'll you'll eventually come across the whole way, this way, that way, and this way, and it'll just pop out. And once that's out, we can measure it up and uh, 3D model the piece there. If you don't want to use 3D printer, you can use um, you know styrene or something like that uh, to strips to to build it out and then um, make something for the mesh here. While I was uh, cutting this with the knife, uh, it kind of slipped a few times, so I ended up using the uh, steel wire brush thing to uh, smooth out those, uh, those knife score marks. Uh, it's kind of working okay. Uh, if I kept at it, um, it would go through, but I'm trying to get this video out today, uh, so it's going to be Dremel time. So um, hopefully this doesn't backfire on me. All right, so to do this, you want to get your hands out of the way. Uh, you're going to go straight down on it. And this is a reinforced Dremel wheel. It's a little bit duller uh, than when it was new. Uh, so hopefully that might work to my advantage. Um, so I think the best way to do this is Now keep in mind it's better to cut through, sorry, keep in mind it's probably better to cut through uh, the grate since it's disposable uh, versus the body shell so I am uh, moving it up just a little bit. But then you want to bring the Dremel to the body shell and obviously I'm using the reinforced wheel uh, so that it doesn't break.
All right, so I'm gonna do this over this end and hopefully you can sort of still see it. Okay, so you can see there, it's made light work of it. Uh, so we'll do either end, and uh, hopefully it'll uh, turn out pretty well. It might be a little tricky to do this on camera, but I will, I will try. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, it's time to clean this mess up and see what we've left with. Uh, one thing I can tell you is it threw bits everywhere, uh, so be careful with that. Uh, it also didn't smell very good, so you may want to wear a respirator or something. Um, so let's uh, clean this up real quick and see what we're left with. I'm gonna need the All right, so there you have it. We uh, took the grill off without taking the body shell off, which is a plus. And we're gonna set this aside because we're gonna need that for the shape later. And obviously we're gonna have to clean this up. Um, we'll clean it up with a mixture of, um, you know, straightening it out with the uh, Dremel tool and just uh, sanding it down a little bit here. All right, so let me go clean this up and uh, you can have it. It's uh, it's looking good. All right, so all right, so I cleaned it up a bit. Um, it was a little hard to do it on camera, so I'll just show you what I did. But basically, I took the reinforced Dremel wheel, and with it rotary, I um, basically just touched it up against this, and it melts the thing away like butter. Um, and likewise, uh, this way, until I had all the black of the grill, it's pretty much done. Um, you can see here, it did create a huge, huge mess. So I'm gonna go get um, the vacuum cleaner thing and just a, a hand back and just uh, vacuum this up. Uh, just make sure there's no detailing parts uh, or tools or anything that you're gonna vacuum up. Uh, but it did create a very fine uh, plastic dust everywhere. So we need to uh, clean that up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll run over this with the uh, steel brush. Um, tool and I think that will, will clean it up um, so while I was hesitant to use the Dremel tool um, it did take like you saw like a couple minutes 
um, I'd probably still be cutting it if um, I had waited. So um, while it's a little, a little, little uh, risky, I've never done that before. Um, and you can saw it, it wasn't that hard. So uh, just have a go. And just remember, I used the reinforced disc and it had been one that I'd used for cutting track for a while. Uh, so it wasn't quite as sharp. If you use a new disc, uh, you may need to be a little bit more careful. Uh, this is also a Dremel tool with low and high speed. And obviously I ran it in a, in a, in a low speed. And this is an old tool too. I think that's for a while, it's a Dremel 200. Okay, so as you saw there, uh, we dremeled uh, that out and it turned out pretty well. And so now what we're going to do is um, just get rid of any excess parts um, that are there. And so we're going to use this uh, steel brush and it's just going to help us file it down so it's nice and smooth um, so that when we put the 3D printed part in there, it uh, works out pretty well. And so what I'm going to do is uh, all the 3D printer parts, um, I'm going to make them available via Trackside 3D. Um, if you don't have a 3D printer, um, we'll put a, a bit of a relaxed license on it so you can have a friend or something uh, 3D printer for you if you want. And um, we'll also stick it up on Shapeways and provide a few other um, bits of information in the article. Uh, so that if you want to do this to your class um, 66, uh, you can at least have access to the same parts that, that we had. Um, and so basically all I'm doing here is just uh, smoothing out the rough parts. Don't worry about this, it's going to be messy, it's not going to be pretty. Um, and if you make a hash of it, don't worry, um, you know, there's super glue <laughs> if it comes to that, right? Nothing, something that can't be fixed and if you really break it, I guess we can always 3D print a new body shell if we had to. Um, but obviously that was made for a much longer video. Uh, so hopefully, so far it's been uh, smooth sailing, especially since some of the stuff is uh, first time for me. So uh, you're along for the ride. Um, again, what we're aiming for here is just to have um, smooth, and I wouldn't worry about you know messing up the paintwork, like I said. Um, we can repaint this um, either with a brush or with an airbrush. Uh, you can get EWS um, red and real mesh paints, um, Latin Sabum, it's for uh, I place my order for them. Uh, you can get it in yellow as well as the EWS red. And you can get all the various different real mesh colors, so it doesn't matter which class 66 you're working on. Um, There's a little bit of a ledge there, so I'm just trying to uh, smooth that out. Um, it's looking looking pretty good. And I wouldn't worry too much if there's uh, a little bit of black left over from the thing. It's all going to get worked out when we put the 3D printed part in. And what we're going to do is we're going to 3D print um, basically a flat edge that goes across. Um, so we will have a, a flat piece that basically um, will sit in there like that. And then um, what we'll do is we'll we'll have it, um, the, this part here, um, we'll have a, a face here or a panel here and a panel on this side. And then um, we'll have the beam uh, through the center. So I'll probably 3D print it as one part. Uh, so it'll be the base, the ends, and uh, the beam through the center. And uh, I'll probably, um, maybe use the slant of this uh, to have a kind of anchoring points onto the body shell. I need to make sure that there's enough clearance with the motor. I, I don't think it'll be a problem. And then once that's in place, we'll we'll put the two mesh panels that we'll print separately um, on top of it, and it should be good. All right, so let me uh, 
finish working on this and then we'll uh, move on to the last thing which is to uh, paint these um, their proper color and then uh, glue them on uh, to the now butchered uh, body shell and this is actually uh, feeling pretty smooth so I think we're we're done with that for now all right well uh, that was fun uh, you can see um, I took the exacto knife uh, which is here and um, I just cleaned out the uh, the corners there uh, just give me a, a slightly better edge uh, I also then ran over it uh, a few more times with the steel brush that's now looking a little worse to wear gonna have to order some more of those I think um, all right so next up is uh, the uh, paneling by the way uh, you might want to move the stuff out of the way before you drill the from the Dremel, uh, it's got a few bits and pieces uh, kind of all over it, uh, but that's all right. It just comes right off. Uh, you can see what I was talking about here. Um, the um, the paint pretty much uh, eliminates most of the 3D printed lines. Uh, you gotta be careful um, not to um, overprint it. You can see there I didn't bother printing the bottom, so you can still see the lines on the bottom there from the 3D printer um, but on top here uh, they have starting to go away so when we put the enamel paint or the acrylic paint on top um, it should uh, get the rest of the lines out of the way so you can use whatever paint you want um, I am using it's the wrong one um, so just you know I think earlier in the start of the video I said I was going to use this flat gray I didn't have to use the flat gray because I was able to use the, the panel liner uh, to do what I wanted to do, which was to basically um, make the edges of these panels stick out. Um, for this uh, s panel that has these uh, rivets uh, underneath this vent, I actually dropped the panel liner onto the rivet uh, to make it stand out. And that's worked um, really well, as you can see there. Uh, I like the panel liner. It's... Uh, really made a, a huge difference. Uh, so one thing I'm going to also do is I'm going to 3D print um, the windshield wipers or windscreen wipers and also uh, the mirrors on the side uh, which is one of the reasons why I ordered the EWS red paint and um, again this is the leftover bit which is the panel so we'll, we'll throw that in there. Alright so um, next up we're going to go and uh, paint uh, these parts. Uh, this bit's done so um, we can just uh, glue that um, onto the model in the correct position. I believe it just goes right here, uh, like that. All right, so uh, I think I got a little sidetracked, uh, running a little bit less sleep than I probably should have. So this is a uh, flat steel uh, from Testers. Uh, we're gonna go shake it up, mix it, and uh, paint um, these parts here in that color. And um, um, before I do that though, I'm gonna run the um, fiber uh, bristle along uh, some of these uh, 3D printer parts just to smooth out uh, the paint where the uh, primer paint is kind of not quite dried so smoothly. Um, I'm going to glue uh, this piece on here and we'll paint that um, the, the red paint when it's done. Okay, so to glue the uh, 3D printed uh, parts, uh, I'm using this uh, Elmer's uh, school glue. It's just regular uh, PVA. And I've taken this uh, spare lid that I've had, I've put a dab of it on there. And I'm going to take this uh, disposable paintbrush. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the unpainted side. And I'm going to um, just dab, uh, dab the paintbrush um, in the PVA glue. Remove the hair off of the piece. And then just um, lightly apply the glue like so to the part. And um, I found that this is the doesn't leave kind of um, glue marks and uh, when it sets it's pretty strong um, doesn't want to go anywhere like so and then what I typically do is uh, where I haven't applied glue to the part I'm just going to loosely apply glue um, to the loco uh, it's also a good time to check to make sure you're putting it in the right place. Um, 
and then what you want to do is use a pair of cocktail sticks to basically um, line it up and if you get glue over the edges a little bit um, you can clean it up with a cocktail stick like that and nice thing with this is that you can make sure that it's lined up properly and then push down on it like so all right and uh, then you just let it let it dry okay so um, the paint is dried on our parts and uh, we're getting ready to uh, just give it a quick look over so you can see uh, we had the panel liners work pretty well uh, we've cut out uh, the hole here we also cut out um, the holes in the chassis um, you can see here the panel liner has worked really 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 well um, quite pleased with that and on the roof uh, we've glued our painted uh, 3D printed part to it you can see there like I said the panel liner has worked really really well so the last part is to glue these parts in place so what we're going to do is pop that in there we're going to attach uh, like so and then this is the last piece um, and it's going to go in like that so this last piece that's here um, this piece actually uh, needs to sit in a kind of a recessed bay or sort of a it's cowl or something like that um, so I have to 3d print that it's sitting on the printer um, so I'm going to not glue this piece in place um, but the rest of it um, we can uh, go ahead and, and glue in place so um, this here is the base of it so I'm going to take the paintbrush we got some uh, PVA glue here and we're just going to attach the PVA glue to the base uh, so thin layer should work and it's not going to take much to glue it and then I'm also going to put a small amount of PVA right in here um, one thing you will notice is I haven't taken out um, the rivets um, that were here from the uh, Hornby um, piece and the reason for that is um, it just provided it with a little bit of extra um, elevation so yeah, it should be fine so we're going to go ahead and uh, glue this in place um, just going to give it a final brushing over here to make sure that it's uh, the paint is pretty much dried on this uh, the trick is you got to make sure you get the uh, make sure you get the um, thing in the right plot and then we're also going to go and glue this piece in place um, going to apply a little bit of glue to the end um, and glue to the base like so um, because we're using PVA we can um, sort of drop it in place and then manipulate it around a little bit to make sure it's in the right position now I sort of built the parts so that they would really just fit automatically for me you can see there um, just have to reposition it a little bit um, but with the PVA and the paint it's going to go and look uh, pretty good so you can see there, um, even though it's separated parts, actually it's now looking um, pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna let that um, sit here and dry. Uh, okay, so we've uh, put the thing uh, back together for today. Uh, you can see 
the panel lining has worked really well. We didn't bother um, painting this gray when I used the uh, gray and dark gray and light gray panel lining. Um, it worked really well. Uh, we cut out the roof so it's ready to roll for uh, next week. Uh, we glued the 3D printed part to the top. We'll cover that with some EWS red paint in a future video. Um, you can see we did a panel lining on the roof panels to make them uh, stand out a little bit better. Uh, we glued in the uh, two parts of the silencer. Uh, we'll glue in the third part once we've made the uh, cowl for it. Um, and you can see we've got a fairly nice looking project um, underway. So one thing I wanted to show you was um, since I've put this back on the um, back on the chassis more or less, um, I wanted to show you guys real quick um, that you know just te how to test the hole we put in the chassis. So what I'm going to do is uh, make sure it's lined up, and then um, just put the drill bit. You can see. The drill bit goes all the way through now, so we know that that works okay. And likewise, it goes all the way through on the other side, so those are ready for um, the LED lights. I also did the other end. Uh, I'll uh, rip this around real quick. And on the other end, um, you can see here. That works. I think this bit might be a little too big to go through. Um, yeah, there you go. So it goes all the way through and so on. So we're good there. All right, and uh, we'll give you guys a quick look. There's the front, doesn't look too bad. We'll um, clean it off some more, and I think we'll do some work to get some lenses or something on there. Gotta put that um, lamp iron back on. Uh, you can see looking this way it is raised the way it should be. Looking head on this way it is on the roof there. Um, and we'll weather that up so it looks right. And uh, again this way it looks correct. And then this way as well. Um, so it's all all looking good all right so um that's it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed it uh hope you guys enjoyed uh picking up some of the stuff there's just a run over it real quick um we drilled the holes in the chassis we uh painted primed and painted um the 3d printed parts here for the roof um we primed this part we're going to paint it ews red uh, the piece that goes on here that connects is three parts. Um, that needs a cowl that will go across here and come about halfway down. And uh, that's currently sitting on a 3D printer. It's going to be uh, painted in aluminum color. And we'll glue that on and we'll glue um, the other piece on top of it. Um, we got a 3D print um, the piece that goes in here to create the, the grills. Um, I'll do a piece across here and a piece across there. All is one piece. It'll just drop in glued to the inside of the, the body there so it should be fine. Um, we did panel liner uh, along the roof here uh, with the tape. Um, we also did it down the sides uh, highlighting all the different details around paneling and so on. Um, I used uh, dark gray throughout most of it um, but on these side grills here I used uh, light gray on this one and then went over it with dark gray just to give it the kind of a more weather type look. Uh, you also have more panel lining done on the side. I put some panel liner down here. Um, all I, was, I didn't do any panel liner on the uh, parts here. I don't think it needed it. Um, already stands out pretty well. I think it would have been a bit too much. Uh, but around the doors and down through some of the parts, uh, it worked really well. We will have to repaint. Uh, this as well. I'll oh, also put some panel liner on um, this part here. Um, there's a vent piece that goes here. I'll have to uh, put that together on the 3D printer. And obviously, um, next week, what we're going to do is the LED electronics. Hopefully, uh, we can get something wired up 
uh, that either uses this or uses something similar. And this is the plug for um, the DCC. So we ought to drop that in and attach the lighting and uh, maybe even look at kind of some cool projects perhaps we can control the lighting without it um, while it's in DC mode. Um, I think there's some work I need to do on the boogie, so I need to go and do some more research on that. Um, I do want to uh, clean this up a little bit, make it a little bit more realistic. Um, and then when we're done um, with that, so like next week, I think it's going to be the lights. We'll see what 3D printing parts we can do, but the lights are probably going to take up the bulk of the video. Um, I've got some mirrors I need to uh, 3D print, as well as the uh, windscreen wipers. And then um, got to put that back together. And then when it's all done, um, what we're going to do is in the last video, um, we'll weather it all up for um, the uh, railhead treatment train and then you'll see it running with the railhead treatment train stuff um, on the layout with the lights and so on. Alright so that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to uh, put any comments or suggestions or anything I may have uh, left out or some any other ideas you might have uh, in the comments below and feel free to uh, share the video. Uh, it's always fun to uh, Take a Dremel tool uh, to your model trains. All right, well, until next time.